Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. In today's video, we are looking at defending. In this video, I'm going to give you guys five top tips that should help transform your defense and make you get a lot more clean sheets, concede a lot less stupid goals, and be able to dominate your opponent, get the ball back a lot more, and have more fun being able to attack. The first tip in this video is going to be team and tactics related. Then the second to fifth, so the last four, are all going to be gameplay clips. I'm going to show you some things that I do when I'm defending that if you can copy them start doing them they're gonna help you a lot now yes you're probably looking at my team and thinking oh well anyone can defend with that team well before someone says that I'm, I've got a road to glory account that I hit 20 and 0 on last week and had a center back in it who was worth a thousand coins yes having Lucio compared to say Araujo that is gonna help and make a difference but you can apply all the things in this video with a 10k defense or a million coin defense the thing though is, I would say you need to be looking at defenders with certain stats. That's the first tip. Lengthy, if you're on new gen, is important. Cancelo doesn't have it. I'd rather have Kyle Walker. Cancelo is still very good, of course. Um, Kyle Walker would just not give me full chemistry. And I think chemistry is really important right now. But um, every other defender in my team basically is going to get lengthy. My midfielders get lengthy, which is really useful. Lengthy just basically makes players be able to keep up with the faster big players and it makes them stronger physical stats really matter this year strength's a key stat that's why i really like the anchor chemistry style gives a little bit more pace gives good defending but gives eight strength so i've got that on all of my fullbacks long term i do want to replace cancello for someone a bit better physically and then when it comes to the tactics this is team and tactics of gameplay one right now i'm i've switched to balance most of my tactics at the start of the year were on press after possession loss. And honestly, at a lower level, I'd probably still use press after possession loss, which probably sounds a bit coward but at a higher level, where chip through balls are really, really OP, if you have press after possession loss, it's very hard to do anything because people just seem to kill you over the top of chip through balls. But it's being able to switch it up as well. So I've balanced defensive style for that, and then I will switch to press after possession loss if I'm losing. Pressing is something that we'll talk about in some of the gameplay clips, but tip number one, have meta defenders who are good enough pace, solid defending, good physical stats, lengthy if you're on new gen, old gen, you just want similar stats, it's still important. And then tactics that are going to work for you. Let's get into gameplay tip number two. Are you looking to improve at FIFA? Then underdog gaming is the place to be. Underdog gaming is run by me, Zelonius, and Jambu, another FIFA pro who have been full-time content creators and pro players for the last six years, hitting Elite Division and Top 100 with ease every single year. We've got lots of different tiers catered to what you want, from all the way from entry-level access to a big community Discord full of people all looking to improve and get better at the game, weekly articles and videos with exclusive tips and guides and tutorials, follow-backs on Twitter where you can DM us uh, and get full access to us, Coaching sessions, gameplay analysis. We'll be doing a spreadsheet which will be updated throughout the year with all the OP meta players. If you want to improve at FIFA and you're serious about taking your game to the next level, Underdog Gaming is the place to be. You can find the Patreon by going to patreon.com slash underdog gaming or check the link that's in the description of this video. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Okay, tip number two here and this is a really important one. Chip through balls are really OP this year. If you do not mark these, you will be in for trouble. You will be in for a bad time. You will concede a lot of goals. Always mark the runs in behind. AI defenders don't pick these up very well this year. You'll watch here. You can see there when someone's running in a straight line, putting the hand out like that, it means someone's pressed L1 to trigger a run. Basically, to do that, you just look at the player with the analog stick and press L1. He's now running in behind. He's going to make a run in behind. And my Virgil right now is just stood facing that way. If I do not switch to Virgil, he'll basically just stay there. This guy will run past it. If he types a chip through ball, he's in. I'm not going to catch him. Especially when people have players like Soloff, Haaland, that new Zeko. Even CR7, lengthy strikers with high pace. You are not catching them if they get in behind. See there, I cover it. And I, I know he's going to go for it anyway. Bad pass by me there, I should have gone up that way. But so many times I play people who it does not matter how I defend it. If I don't switch, if I switch and completely cover it, they will still pass it. 
even though I've completely covered this, this guy that still goes for the pass, I can promise you most people you play against, if they're trying to do this, like a lot of people don't even know about the through balls, but a lot of people do, especially in the high divisions. Even if you mark it, they'll still go for it. If people just try them, try them, try them anyway. So mark the through ball. As soon as you see someone running in behind like that, switch to the last centre back using right stick switching and cover it. If you do not, you're in for a world of pain. But if you start covering it, you will stop them nearly every time and you'll get the ball back a lot more. Tip number three is keeping defensive shape. Keeping the structure of your defense in shape is going to make a huge difference when it comes to defending. So many people, when I do coaching lessons, when I analyze games, when I score goals and play against people online and watch how I'm scoring, most of the time it comes simply from them just pulling men out of position and giving me easy goals. My philosophy on defending, and I think this is, if you guys can take anything away from this video, this is the most important thing to take away. My philosophy is, if I concede, I want it to be either because I've been screwed over by the game, or because my opponent just did something so good, it was I couldn't have stopped it. Honestly, those two things happening, very rare that they happen to the point you couldn't control it. This game, yes, it can be quite random, and you can concede some stupid stuff that could be frustrating. But if you make yourself very hard to beat, you are not going to concede many goals. <clears throat> so many people dive in, pull men out of position, and all you have to do to make them do that really is just pass it about a bit. I'm not even saying time wasting. But watch what this guy does here. He switches it there, that's good. Switching the play is a really good thing to do on this game. He's passing it about. A lot of people here would just be running at him and being stupid. I'm not running game like crazy, but I am putting some pressure on. I'm still trying to set up traps, make it hard for him to keep the ball. See there, I'm getting my team in shape. I've got my CDM there. My back four around here. Grincher there, second man pressing a bit to get him closer. Second man presses down. I know he's probably going to go there now. I cover it with Vieira. And then there. Now, he's done a pretty good pass. He's moving the ball pretty well. But I know it's safe here. So he's probably going to cut back inside. I second man press Mendy a bit just to get him a bit closer. I'm going there just to try to stop any passes around this area. And there, Mendy gets the ball. That was nearly 20 real life seconds there where my opponent couldn't really do a lot. He was moving the ball well. He was trying to draw me out. He was doing good patient build up. And this is something you could definitely do more when you're winning. Like if I'm a goal down late on. I'm not just going to keep defensive structure and barely do anything. I'm going to turn to constant pressure on. I'm going to run at them a lot more. There is times when you have to be a bit more aggressive and dive in a bit more. But for the most part, especially from nil-nil at the start, if you just don't dive in, keep defensive structure, make yourself very hard to beat, you are going to have a much better time and concede a lot less goals. A general tip that I give to people when learning FIFA, especially a new FIFA, is try not to overcomplicate things. Especially on things like maybe skill moves. When it comes to learning skill moves, don't try to add 10 new ones to your game. Try to do one at a time. And on this new FIFA, there was quite a few new features added. And one that I didn't really experiment with. And at first, honestly, I didn't like it. But now that I've actually started using it, I think it's almost a little bit OP. Is the partial team press. So this is double tapping R1. And I'm going to show you how it works here. If you can add this to your game, especially around your own box, it can be a bit of a game changer, to be honest. So, <clears throat> we'll go back a little bit there. You can see right now, the green bar above Cancelo's head. So, I'm using the second man press here to make it so the uh, AI presses a little bit more and puts a bit more pressure on the ball. And now, look here. I do a second, uh, I do a partial team press. Instead of being green, it's like a turquoise blue. And basically, I don't really, it doesn't seem consistent in ter for the most part in terms of who it does it for. But what it does is, the two defenders whose head it's above, so this guy and this guy, it means they go and cover the nearest man, like get really tight, almost like the team pressing. So watch what they do. There. Here, he gets tight to him, which means he gets less time on the ball as soon as he gets it. This guy here is really tight, but the better example in a sec is coming up. I do it again. So look now. He is really tight to him. Like, hey, this game works here. Lucio's just going to bumble right through him, get the ball straight away, and win it easy. And then this guy here, who is his obvious passing option, he's going to be put under pressure straight away. 
and there he's forced into a pass because this guy's going to be able to take it off him and it forces people into bad mistakes one of the areas that it's really good in is defending cutbacks because a lot of the time on this game good players will get the ball not like that, will get the ball around this area or around there and they'll dance around with it and then they'll cut it back to someone who's normally wide open because your AI don't defend them if you do the partial team press it will mark the two men in the middle who are going to be the cutback and pretty much they never get free when I use the partial team press around the box to defend cutbacks my guys always basically jump on top of them and never let them score them you can use it higher up the pitch sometimes as well to put pressure on and catch people out I'm experimenting and getting better with it but I definitely think as a higher more advanced level thing if you can add this to your game especially around your own box it really makes it a lot harder for people to score past you and it's a really OP defensive thing when mastered. Last tip for this video we're going to talk about is jockeying. I'm not going to show like 10 dozen examples of it. Like jockeying is very simple. You hold L2 and effectively what it does is it slows your player down, allows him to react and turn a bit quicker. Also jockeying increases the tackle percentage chance, increases the chance of making a block. Jockeying is OP and when you jockey and know how to do it well, if you position right with it, it's near impossible for someone to dribble around you without getting very lucky. So many people at lower levels do not jockey or they sprint jockey or they just sprint and run at people. And when they do this, it is so, so easy to get past them. Watch this here. This is elite division rivals, so I guess people know all the best tricks, know how to dribble. And watch what I do here with Mendy. At this point here, I'm just, I don't want him to get down there. I don't want him to get inside. I'm just holding my ground. Why is the software keep doing that? I'm holding my ground there and I win the ball back. At this point here, a lot of people that I watch would just run at him. He'd just do a trick and burst past me. Holding my ground there with jockey makes it very hard to beat and I get the ball back a lot quicker. If you press tackle on this year's game, that's really good. A few other tips I can give to finish the video Learn how to get good with second man press but without diving in. Close down long shots. If you press jockey when you're about to close down a long shot, if you're close enough, it will make the block chance a lot higher. Jockeying, honestly, is just a very good way to make yourself not dive in as bad, not get beat. Jockeying, honestly, people ask me, when do I jockey, when do I sprint? I only ever sprint into open space if I've got a massive space for into or if someone's in behind and I have to capture them. If, some, if I'm... Uh, if someone's kind of, uh, how do I put it, if I'm closer to my net, like if they're in front of me basically, and I'm close to my net, I will never be sprinting at them unless I'm certain I'm going to be able to just run at them and get the ball. Jockeying, standing your ground will make you much harder to break down and much harder to beat. Add it to your game, make yourself a better defensive player, it'll help you a lot. Hope this video has helped you guys, appreciate the support as always on the channel lately. If you like this video and you're new around here, please consider subscribing every single day new content helping you guys get better at the game i appreciate the love and support of the channel keep it spicy i'll see you guys in the next one peace